Are you concerned about all this corruption being misgendered as conspiracies? Well, don't you worry. Sit back, relax, and join in the conversation as we talk with today's guest. Welcome to another LSB Film Productions podcast with your host, Chris Brooks. Hello and welcome to today's podcast with me, Chris Brooks. Today's guest is a gentleman called Daniel James and Daniel James has spent over 20 years in the food industry from all different levels of the food industry and today we will be exploring the thesis that the cooking of food is an ancient practice dating back to the dawn of human civilization. While initially the instinctual means of survival, the art of food preparation has evolved and to encompass not only the techniques of cooking, but also the intricate understandings of the underlying scientific processes. Through the lens of elemental science, this thesis aims to delve into the symbolic relationship between cooking and the emergence of scientific principles. So it's also, as I would assume, is alchemy. So welcome to the channel and I hope you enjoy this podcast. I think it's going to be very interesting and more than likely eye-opening for everyone watching. So welcome to the channel, Daniel Thomas. It's nice to have you here. Thank you You're more than welcome. Please do explain a little bit about yourself and your credentials. Well, um, I... I spent my whole life being a professional chef, um, you know, cooking for you know, cooking for people. And since 2020, um, we've seen basically, especially my side of the industry, you know, cooking fresh food, ones that, you know, we're not dinging it in a microwave and everything. There's no work for us. We're, we're not wanted. Mm-hmm. And that's... That's that's soul destroying in itself. But from when you look at it in population terms of things, it's devastating. It's yeah, absolutely, absolutely devastating. Um, and there's now going to be a huge shortage of food in the world. Uh, we've we're not connected to food. As no, we've people, lost our connection. Uh, a species, you know. Uh, there's, there's, there's so much you know, chemicals in food and everything now. Um, you, you can see it, how, how people are, how they how they act and everything um, in their behaviour. You know, everyone's hyper depressed you now because it's, of all the, all the chemicals in food. It's kind of what they say, you are what you eat. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I've downloaded the Yucca app. Have you heard okay. of the Yucca app? I you bas- no. Okay, no. well, it's, it's amazing. You basically scan any barcode of food or cosmetics and it will list all the harmful stuff in it. So even like quavers, you know, the, the powder that they put on to give them the flavouring is carcinogenic. And there's things it's like amazing. inhibitors. Yeah. You, um, you pack a Doritos. Yeah. You take a take a lighter to it, just the one Dorito, you know, that'll that'll well you can take that Dorito camping with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have a fire with <laughs> you. Know what I mean? yeah. so you don't want to be eating it. You just don't want to be eating it, you know. No, um, you're right. But this I've tried reaching out to food banks, um and you know, trying to sort of like, you know, these we've seen you know, since twenty twenty the amount of charities that have popped up in terms of food banks and everything, you know, to get food that's being dis- 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 discarded by the industry. Um, because at the end of the day, if there's no profit for it. They, they've been in it. Yeah. And that's, you know, they're not caring about whether this food's off or even safe or not for the, for the people. They're just, they're just dishing it out. Um, I've I've spoken several places. Uh, I've, I've moved about in, in the past three years, um, purely because that's you know being a chef, you spend most of your time either living, well, you do spend most of your time living. So you know when like society collapses, you you kind of you're back on the road again. So um, 
I've tried you know pointing out to to all these places you know where they're, where they're going wrong you know and what they're not doing they're not encouraging, not encouraging people to get in their back gardens you know people are encouraged to have their gardens for show for aesthetics yeah that's not in fact I, I even saw I even saw an article in the paper which is convenient what with all the food shortages saying that growing food in your garden it could be damaging to the environment you know they're so desperate for people not to be self-reliant yeah i'd like to see the evidence on that one i really would i'd like i'd like to, to see the evidence yeah. on global warming <laughs> full stop the growing food in your back garden produces more carbon than what an agricultural farm does because it's absolute bullshit i'm sorry yeah. excuse my language don't worry about absolute it <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. No, it is. That's insane. That's unhinged thinking, that is. That's unhinged thinking. The amount of carbon that goes into agricultural farming just to get your food from the farmer's, from the farmer's lands to, to, to the production uh, areas. Because your food doesn't go from land to table. It goes from land to the producers where it gets sprayed, cleaned, washed, covered with their waxes and everything so it doesn't go off. Then it goes to the shelf, right? It's over. It's also in storage for six months. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. Your, it's not even fresh. It's not even fresh. No, right. Like, the only way you get go to the farmer and get it literally from the ground. That's the only yeah. way you'll get it fresh. That's or right. Yourself. Did you see and the um, interview that I did with Mark Byford from the Ark Project? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, so they're they're working really hard to try and combat all this, but at the end of the day, it's the whole point that they're trying to demonise the gas of life. We need more of that yeah. in order to grow more. Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. We live in an upside down world where good is evil and evil is good. It does seem that way. It does seem that way. Well, it's, it's, no, it is that way. That's the way they're they're acting on it at the moment. You know, um, everything's back to front. Yeah. You, you but I am quite confident that people are waking up to this. Certainly now. Certainly now people are actually waking up. Um, it's, it's definitely some signs going on and everything. The, the farmers, that's... I think these people in this country are in for a huge shock. Because we Absolutely. import most of our food. Yeah, until um, they stop importing yeah, and the shipping bans. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, you've got the farmers now. They're actually attacking, and rightly so. They're they're actually destroying the food that's coming from the from the producers, which is going into Paris. Because what they're doing, they're not they're not they're not committing they're not committing a crime. They're actually preventing a crime being committed on the people. Yeah, in Paris yeah. By destroying that food, because that mm. food's now tainted. It's poison. You know, so they're not doing anything wrong. They're actually doing the people of Paris a favour. But the people of Paris won't see it that way. No. And they'll see it that their food's being... They'll and, see it from the narrative that's, that's pushed. That's pushed, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone needs to side with farmers. We need to get people... There's, the, the amount of land that's unused in this country that could be turned into no dig farming, you know, outside blocks of flats, all, all around the towns, outside the city centres and everything. The amount of walking spaces that are allocated to football pitches. Now, you know, no. See, so it doesn't really, it doesn't help that the government are incentivizing farmers to not grow food, but to rewild, and the, and the farmers are being subsidised for that. That doesn't help. I I have I have a family member that has has a farm, and in my whole life, I've never known them to do farming. Really? Yep, never known them to do farming. They've always they've been subsidised, and you know it's a joke. It's terrible. It's yes, it's terrible. It's terrible. You know, I know several you know, several people have got land, and they they don't do farming because they're subsidised. You know. And it's, it's an absolute shame. It's because that's that horrific. It could be used for growing food, uh, and it should be used for growing food. That's that's we've we've got one of the best countries for growing food. Not only that, 
the whole world itself. We we base our, our food brand on four seasons on on what we can grow within that specific season. But while we're having a cold season, another country's having a good season, start of their season and everything. Yeah. So our, if our knowledge is shared around around with everyone, there's so much more that we can grow. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Seasons aren't only only in fours. It is it four goes into so much many, many times. You know, and with the this there's seven billion people on the planet. They you know, they make it like we can't transport food. We we can transport food pretty easily, given the yeah. amount of people on the planet and given the amount of resources that we do actually have in terms of transport and things like that and everything, it's not it's not difficult. It's just people don't want to think about it. The governments don't want to think about it. They don't want to put their brains together. They come up with these think tanks of people that are thinkers. Yeah, that's okay, doing a lot of thinking and everything, but you, you do a lot of thinking, but if you're not doing the practical side of it, all that thinking just goes to waste. Uh, yeah. It becomes wasteful money. Um but unfortunately, these group think people are people like the WEF, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whose, yeah. uh, whose sole uh, mission is to destroy everything we've got. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, um, they're not nice people. Um, I am surprised that uh, um, Davos hasn't actually been raided as a town yet. You know? Yeah, it's just the fact that it's so high up and it's so far out of reach. Um, you know, getting the masses there to riot that town. Is virtually impossible, you know, no, because they'd be overrun within minutes. Overrun. Yeah, that's right. Um, so tell tell me about the um because obviously we know how vitally important food is just as a commodity, but also the importance of it in the scientific, almost like the alchemy way of food. Well, that that I've I've never been really great with words. But um, the only way that I can explain it is, is that there is a food item on the planet that the planet grows. Mm-hmm. That is specific to every single organ, every single organ on your body, every single cell on your body. That the, the planet provides it all. So yeah. the walnut. If you look at a walnut, if you crack that open, right? But if you can crack it open without actually breaking the nut itself, you put that nut on the table, right? And then you take. Oh, if, <laughs> it sounds sick, right? But cut someone's head open. It looks like a brain, right, yeah. The table, put the walnut on the table, yeah. Right, the same. It's the same freaking thing. Mm, yeah. You know, which is what they call walnuts brain food, good for the brain. Yeah. 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 You know, every 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 item that the planet grows for us has a purpose, and it's all that knowledge is denied. You know, it's um, it's, it's just denied on, on profit purposes, basically. Um, yeah. every. One, which is what the um, old school home economics class. That's now you, you can't do that at school. No, you've got to go can't do anything school. like that. But you can only have that skill if you want to use it for profit. You can't have that skill if you want to feed your family. Now it's not, it's not their knowledge. It's not their knowledge. Your nan, no. your mum, your grandma. Uh, mum and dad, their mum and dad and everything, they've all had part of it, they've all input into it, you know, but millennia of generations of people. Mm. Now, we can't all say that we've all had a hand in science, only some people can. You know, that's that's fair. Leave them to it. That's, that's if they want to do that, if they want to be, oh, we own this and we own that, fine, piss off and have your ownership and everything of your science. But see, food and the growth of food and the knowledge of food, that's the people's. That Absolutely, yeah. People. So that's got that's nothing to do with anybody else. Because that's a heritage collective, a, a cultural collective of, of the human species that have collaborated over millennia of time to, to gather that information and knowledge. And that's not it's not it's not us, it's not our chefs, it's not it's everybody. It, yeah. it should be there for everybody to have. Um that and it's not, it's it's not. You know, I've got you know two nieces, you know, several nieces. And you have know, conversations with them and their ideas of where food comes from, it, it baffles me. It's, it's like Yeah. No, uh, meat doesn't uh, meat doesn't come from a shelf, it actually comes from an animal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although yeah. these days you can 3D print it, which is super scary. That, 
<laughs> and I've even heard KFC are now doing that with their chicken. I ha- I have I've heard these things. I have I heard these things. I try not to um I try not to let my brain go into that because I I'll, I'll end up at a KFC setting fire to it or something. Yeah. <laughs> not seriously. You know no, I, mean? I could, no. But, it's, but, we are getting to that the, stage now. Just the idea that you know they're out there killing people. You know it makes my blood boil because. You know, you get as a chef, we get up and go to work. We have to do our due diligence and everything. You know, I, I lose my temper if I see someone messing around with chicken. They don't cover it up and things like that and everything. Mm. Or they, or, or, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Food yeah. poisoning is not nice. Yeah, no, no, food poisoning is terrible. Yeah. You know? And if you get a bout of, say, COVID with food poisoning and you're not well, you're going to die. Yeah. And if you get salmonella poisoning or something, or if you get your, your rice has gone off, or you haven't heated it up properly, because you're not supposed to reheat rice. No, That's I've heard this. Toxic bacteria in it that can kill you. Yeah. Wipe back just like that. You're not supposed no. to put red cut onion in the fridge either, are you? No, you're not. No, it's toxic. No. So this, and how? But how many people know this? You know, it's not many. People need educating. Yep. Yep. Um, there's, um, it's, it's like if you go, say you're out camping and you decide to you find, find some fish in the river. You know, you put it in a pan, you decide, oh, I fancy some you know, nice parsley sauce. You see some parsley, and you go and pick it. You've picked the wrong parsley. Because Is there two different types of parsley then? Yeah, yes, yes. So now you're educating me because I, I just thought there was parsley. Every, for every food source that's good, there is the yin and the yang. Okay. There's a poisonous version and there's a good version. And if you don't know what the poisonous version mm. looks like or, or even feels like because you've not been taught it and you're out while camping or while foraging or something, mm. you, you, you take that home and you cook that for your family you just killed your whole family. Because yeah. Not... I suppose mushrooms is the biggest um, example for that, isn't it? Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of things online as well with this psychedelic thing at the moment, which worries me with the mushrooms and everything, because it takes one 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 person to, you know, mistake the mushroom that they've tried in a safe environment and they're out in the wild, you know, oh, yeah, I've had one of those. And they pick yeah. them up, you know, because... That person that's teaching them in a safe environment hasn't taken the time to hold up. There's a dangerous environment as well that needs needs addressing before you go off into the wild and do your thing as a human being. You know. Yeah. No, no, that's that's very true. That's why I'd, I'd rather stick to DMT if I was to do anything like that. <laughs> but moving on. <laughs> but also, but also, even like the fly garricks, you know, it's a case of. If you eat them wet, they'll kill you. But yeah. if they dry it out, they're not. They don't. But obviously, for the for the sake of YouTube censorship, we're not encouraging any form of drug taking. No, we're purely not. coming at this from a, a scientific it's, basis on food of what's it's, edible it's, and not. This is trying to wake people up, and, you know, um, make sure that the you know, especially if um, say crap hits the fan and you end up, you know, living rogue trying to survive and everything, if you don't know what, what is edible and what's not edible on this planet, then you, you mankind is... Yeah. No, that's absolutely correct. And and that's the thing, we've, because we've always settled for convenience, yeah. which really isn't convenient, is that now people are clueless. And like you yeah. say, we've had all this these generations of knowledge, which has always been passed down, and, oh, we don't need that. Now we've got the microwave oh we don't need that we just go to the shop you know so they've purposely fed us down this track so when they pull the rug from under our feet no one's going to know what to do that's right so what what would you say is the best way that we can start educating people on this Uh, we need to force councils and force the education system to bring food back into schools we also then need to um there needs to be some sort of right. There has to be a free system where people that have well, I've got they've got time, you know, in the evenings, an hour or something. There needs to be some 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 way of of getting this education back over to the people because it's Definitely. the people 
patient. It's the people's knowledge. Mm. This is not. This is not their knowledge. You know, I'm. I've, I if I if I buy books or anything, and someone says to me, I don't know anything about cooking. But I'm always giving books away. Always giving my books away. You know, I've got two 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 cooking books at the moment. I'm, I'm going to spend the past year just giving books away because what two people, books that you have made or no, um, book... just you know, standard recipe. You say um, oh, okay, okay. My recipe books and everything, you know. What I mean, you know, so you know, I, I invest in you know, I do spend, you know, I spend money and everything, but I don't end up keeping the books because of the amount of me people I meet on a daily basis that just don't know what they're doing. And I'm like, mm. a book that, that will help you, there you go, you know, because I'm if you put me in a practical environment, I can teach you all day long, mm. put it in a theoretical yeah. environment, my, my brain just goes. No, I haven't got you know. It's, it's all words and letters and everything. You know what I mean? This would be, I'm better with 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 the food. And You're the better product. hands on. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that it, makes sense. I'm the same. I'm the same. When it I'm comes creative, to fear, but I'm not academic. Yeah, yeah. After ten minutes of academic, I'm I'm, I'm climbing the walls. You know what I mean? I want to get out there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get that. I totally get that because I'm very much of the same build. But yeah, so it's so I don't uh, I don't really know where to get the commandeering land is the most important thing, I think now. It's literally commandeering land from the councils that they deem is no, you we that's aesthetically pleasing. No. Fuck you aesthetically pleasing. Like aesthetically pleasing isn't gonna feed your daughter and your son. Aesthetically pleasing isn't gonna keep they wanna go to war. Are they nuts? Well, again, when you know, when you understand why they're doing it, it all makes sense. But for the narrative that they push, you can't, you can't go to war on empty stomachs. It, it's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. The British Army is known for marching on its bloody stomach. Mm. So whatever their plans are, their plans are going to fail because this, the people aren't healthy enough. They're just not healthy enough. <clears throat> no, they're not. Enough, they wouldn't have said half of the people, half the country wouldn't have hid in their homes from. A flu. A flu. Exactly, and they and they never pushed the the um the vitamin D, the the vitamin C, the getting the yeah. fresh air. The you know it was always I'll oh, take this. Yeah, their um their them their them their, their um their medication, their medication, their medication is so fake, it's so unreal. Um, I I have I have no working teeth at the moment. Uh, a dentist in Whip destroyed all my teeth. He was supposed to have removed two back teeth and cleaned up one tooth. He broke all my working teeth um, while while removing a tooth he shouldn't have been removing. And in the process of destroying all my teeth over the past three years, the NHS has decided that it's going to ignore the fact that it's broken my teeth and just label me as mentally insane. So I've been trying to deal with that. Um, this year, it got, well, last year, it got finally someone actually... You know, woke up and was like, no, hang on a moment. This person's not mentally unstable. He's got broken teeth. But because he can't eat, he's now, you know, becoming really ill and everything. And it actually yeah. it killed me last year. Um, and to but, a certain extent, to be fairness, having that painful teeth and broken teeth, that is to some extent going to affect your mental health. Not in, the, not, not, in the, yeah, not in the sense of making you crazy, but it will affect how you how you are mentally. Well, they, 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 um, she was going to, they wanted to put me on, um, you know, loads of painkillers and everything and a load of man-made medication and <clears throat> they tested my body weight and it was 45 kilos. And now the doctor sat down and she'd gone white. She was white, white as a ghost. She was like, I can't give you any medication. I was like, I already know this. I was like, what do you mean I already know this? And I've studied it and I've spent my whole whole life. I said to her, I was like, I'm not just a chef. I'm a dietitian and a nutritionist. Now, I didn't go down the route of being a dietitian and a nutritionist. I wasn't pushed down that route. I was pushed yeah. into commercial cooking. You know, if you want to be a chef, you've got to go and cook for hundreds of people. We're not interested in diet and nutrition. I think, well, you should pay attention to diet and nutrition. You know what I mean? Because below a certain weight, man-made medication will absolutely kill you. Your yeah. body can't cope with it if you're below a certain weight. So obviously the fact that obviously not being able to eat, my body weight obviously eventually went below where the NHS can even do anything for a human being. And she shit herself. 
<laughs> so what, like, so what is that in pounds or stone? Forty five. Uh, by forty five kilos. So if you go below forty five kilos, yeah, made medication. All man made medication is dangerous to the human body. It will kill you. It will absolutely kill you. They can't give it to you. So they have to get you back on real food. Now that means going back to soups and baby food until your body can then start digesting. You see your stomach muscles, they're soft. It's like a bag of cotton wool. Mm. And if you go put in half-chewed beef into your stomach... It can't process it. It can't process it. So it's getting no nutrients. You know, there's no nutrients going into your body. So then you end up ripping your lower body part apart, getting that food out of your body. You know what I mean? You know, mm. not a not a not, good a, not a good place to be in. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. No, especially from a chef's point of view. You know what I mean? It's like, oh shit, man. You know what I mean? You know, even I was like, you know, maybe I didn't study hard enough, even myself. You know, because it it kind of I took it, I suppose to take it for granted. You know, and you do take for granted kind of being a chef. I think know? we, yeah. You no, know, I have. I admit it. I've taken it for granted. You know, um, I been working as a chef. I spent most of my life eating lots of ching, and not really realizing how lucky I am. Mm. And then twenty twenty hit, and it was like that world's gone. You know, and. It's not a case of eating like a king. You, you realise just how important the nutrient value from food is. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. Is it's the excessive eating and that that causes stuff like gout, isn't it? And yeah, and all these yeah. other health implications that you get. Obviously, you've got your diabetes yeah. and stuff. So, what, what what would you? What is your kind of food intake now? Then, and what kind of food do you consume? Uh, basically, I I I live. Um, I'm, not, not, I'm not a good example at the moment because obviously I can't actually eat a lot of food at the moment. So my diet at the moment is living on tea, coffee, and a hell of a lot of marijuana. Right, okay. Straight up, you know what I mean? Because um, when I do eat... Does that I not give you the munchies? No, 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 no. no. no, 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 no you no. lucky sod. <laughs> Your body goes past all that. Eventually that all fades out and everything. It's, it's, it's purely as a painkiller. It's for no other oh, okay. reason. And also, it does it stops me getting those hunger pains because I mean, you get the, the hunger pains that you get, you know, they become really painful. You know what I mean? And there's no point putting food in your body if you can't chew the food. You no. know, so at the moment, I'm on um, special milkshakes and I have to make myself soups. So I'm living on, you know, um, lentil soups and things like that and everything. I boil, I get ham hocks. Um, they get boiled for eight, eight or nine hours, 10 hours until they're literally. And basically, you know, there's nothing left of the ham. Probably. Yeah, it's just so yeah. tender. It just yeah, it's all in the soup. It's all in the soup. Mm. And so, see, that's, my that's wife how... makes a really nice vegetable soup. So she'll get all your potatoes, carrots, all all of your stewed vegetables, and yeah. she'll boil it or steam it, and then she'll just waz it all up. I'll add a bit of. I don't know, either mustard or horseradish, just to give it a bit more of a zing, and that's really nice. And that's yeah. really nice. But I did learn that a lot of our issues, apparently, is because we've gone from a nation of eating hard food, like hard bread, hard crusts, and it's all this soft um, processed crap, that our jaws over time have actually shrunk. And that's yeah. why people have so many dental issues, because our mouths are nowhere near as big as they should be, because we don't use them like we well, used to. Use them. You, you, uh, um... I don't know how to, how to explain that. Um, well, yeah, you, buy, buy, buy a sandwich. Don't buy a loaf of bread uh, these days. You don't you don't bite into it anymore. You, you tear it. Yeah. You, you literally pull it. Um, I bought some bread the other day. And I very rarely buy bread. And I got home and I bought soft morning rolls. Now, soft morning rolls, I've always looked at them. That's a proper bread rock. Well, I got home and you know, I just threw the bag on the side and everything and I came into the front room to do something. I've gone in and as I've gone into the back into the kitchen, my 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 eye caught caught the um, ingredients label. And I noticed rice flour. And I was like, bread. Bread is as opposed to wheat. just your wheat flour. Yeah, but bread is mm. wheat with flour, yeast. Water, salt, and sugar. That's four ingredients. 
Why, why the hell is there a rice flour in my morning rolls? Why is there bicarbonate of um, uh, something else in there? Emulsifiers. Yeah. You know, why is there E238 e e in my morning roll? I'm, that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not paying for that. No. And, this is where people really need to start learning how to make bread. That's 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 effectively, um, you're not getting a choice as to whether you want these ingredients in your food. They're forcing these ingredients on you. Because you're paying for bread. If you knew what bread was, you'd look for the ingredients off. Yeast, flour, water, salt and pepper, salt and flour, salt and sugar. That's all you need. Nothing else. Yep. Ingredients. You know. So the, the if anything, yeah, all I I don't I very rarely eat any any breads whatsoever from, from the shelves because of I, I get flu symptoms from them straight away now. You know, at least I know it can tap. cause inflammation, can't it? It can cause inflammation, no, yeah. bread. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you got to be careful with your, herb, your herbs and spices as well because they're painting um, uh, yellow dyes, leads onto your onto your spices now. When they when it's turmeric, it's a great um, anti-inflammatory. But you got to be really really careful on what turmeric you're buying because. They're painting a yellow substance on it that's coated with lead. How can they even get away with that? I have no idea because um, we don't we don't regulate their countries. If you're processing importing foods, you you we you, you don't know you don't know you don't know their processes. Food. Yeah, you don't know their process. You don't know their country's regulations for food or anything. You know so. On that on that basis, you don't know what you're eating. You don't know what's what's gone into the food. Um, I I um I was going to order something off Justine the other day. I very rarely get takeaway. I just didn't have the energy to cook, you know. And um, I was just about to do my ordering, and at the bottom it said um your 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 we can't guarantee that your food's not going to be contaminated or poisoned with allergens. From the moment it leaves the restaurant till it gets to you. Really? That's what. Yeah, yeah. It's they've yeah. It's on oh, there. Really? So, they on all their foods on all their on their site now. It says you know they don't guarantee from the restaurant to your house. That's frightening. Oh. Yeah, that is frightening. Do you, do you think that's just more to cover their own backsides, or do you think that that there is a general concern there? There's a general, there's a gen, general concern there. There's a general mm. concern there because they're, they're they're mitigating any um liability. You know, they, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can't yeah. you can't you can't use the driver and put it all on the driver. The the, 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 the two teams they're working together to get that food to you, so they're both responsible. At the end of the day, the the restaurant is responsible. For making sure that that driver is a decent human being and he's not going to go and do anything with your food. Because from A to B, where's your food going? What's it doing? What's being done to it? And what, yeah. what, what cover have you got against it? Because if Just Eat are saying, hey, we've got no liability on this, well, what happens if your food goes to some place and ends up in your house and it comes to you, it's got arsenic in it? Yeah, and it's 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 scary just to think that that's even possible in twenty twenty four, but it so is. Oh, it's incredible. Cool. So I have to say, I don't have takeaway that much, and if I do, I usually go for a kebab. So I think, yeah. okay, it's it's done on the grill, so the drip, the fat drips, no, even though fat is fine. quite good for you, and it's and it's predominantly salad. Yes, yes, it's processed lamb, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, and um, the amount of alcohol that you've got in your body, it's not going to be in your body for long enough anyway <laughs> to do any damage. You know what I mean? That's it. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> true. Not a major issue. Not a major issue. Um, but it's, it's your microwave stuff and everything. You know, you can feed foods with your chemicals, your e-numbers and everything. And anything that isn't a food ingredient, you know, everyone has, we've got all this inf information to our hands on our phones and everything. You know, what you got to mm. do is type up, well, no vegetables, on the planet, if that if that in that if that's not on the ingredients and it's all a list of chemicals, 
you're buying a chemistry set. Yeah. Especially if you live in America. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, at least our suite says no artificial colours and flavourings. That's all that America is. It's all artificial. It's all, oh, yeah, I can't. I used to love American sweets until I realised just how toxic they were. Yeah, I can't even remember the name of the um, sugar that begins with A. Um, Aspartamine? Aspartamine, that's the one. Yeah, mm. yeah. They've, re- they've relabeled that 10 times so far. Mm. That's carcinogenic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, um, that was one of the things that um, I, I got my, my, my biological dad off um, because they use that in ham as well. And he, he, he had... Every single day, mate, he did a pack of ham. And uh, when I took that, when I was his carer, um, that's one of the first things that went, I'm going to get rid of that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, we'll, go, we'll go and get you a gammon from the butchers and we'll boil it up and we'll make you proper ham and everything, you know. And, you know, I'll put him on a, uh, yeah, uh, cabbage, cabbage, boiled potatoes, and basically any, any, any pig, pig item, body part that we could get hold of. That was his diet for a, for basically a whole year, um, and he should have been dead within six months. They, that's what they gave him: six months of cancer. You know what I mean? He's, he's going to be dead. And I was like, shit, I'm not on my fucking watch. He's not. No, you know I mean? no. You know. So, but yeah, from that moment, well, basically from from the moment of you know in passing, you know, um, my my chef career went went downhill. Damn. Um, Pretty pretty rapidly, people you know didn't want to take me seriously or anything. You know, it's like um, yeah, I think they they know that there's there's cures out there for cancer. You know what I mean? And pig diet is definitely one of them. You know, but you've obviously got to make sure that you are c- cooking that pork properly. Yeah. Um. Don't don't be doing any smoked meats with it or anything. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> don't don't be making any cured pork. No. Is that just is that purely because of the carcinogenic side of the smoke on the product? No, it's more to do with tapeworm. If you don't smoke right, it, okay. you don't it properly, you'll get tapeworm, which can kill as well. You know, is, it, is this like the footage that I've seen where they pour coke on some pork and these worms will come out, or is yeah, that a yeah, little bit? Is yeah, is that a, a real thing? Because I know there is a lot of scaremongering as well. That, no, that's that's tapeworm. It's coming out of the body. It's coming out of the right, body. Okay. But now you mm-hmm. can kill that. Yeah, I know. You, you can kill that. You shouldn't most animals. You shouldn't most animals. Hmm. It's a prize, you know what I mean? You know, parasites. But you can kill them off. But they need... See, this is... I... Oh, fuck it, I'm going to say it. Religion, yeah. right, was used to control. People pick pork, right, is one of your quickest rearing animals. Right? Now, if you've got a people that are self-sustaining, <clears throat> and they're using pork and they're living with it and everything and they're in abundance of food it's the quickest way to scare people you invent something and you invent a product that the people don't know about which is cured pork now cured pork mate, you, you've only got to create a pandemic of tapeworm and that scares people into oh my god there's something wrong with pork pork is bad for you Get rid of pork, get rid of pork, get rid of pork. There was a, a whole a whole religion was invented in my eyes, in my mind, my opinion. It is my opinion. This is my opinion. All right? Mm-hmm. Everybody else other, opinions, everybody. other opinions available, folks. Yeah, yeah, other opinions available. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's my opinion. But that religion was invented purely to control people. And pork was used as a catalyst. As mm, a yeah, catalyst. because most, most um, religions say don't eat pork, don't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is pork mm. was a catalyst. And the catalyst was, was that it, it's an abundant animal. It's quick rearing. It produces so much. It's extremely healthy for you, but it, it's very unhealthy if you don't cook it properly. So mm. if you, if you, same with, you know, some of our generations, our younger generations today, they don't know what real food is because they've not been taught it. So you can imagine, you know, 2,000 years ago, the whole generation was was hidden from what they, how they traditionally cooked pork and everything. Next thing you know, you've got a massive pandemic of tapeworm and illness and everything going through the population, ban pork. You've, you've, you've controlled the population. You've got the population under control because they're now coming to you because they don't know what to eat. They don't know what mm. to do. 
You know, so you've, you've got them, you've got them. You know, and that's that's why that religion was invented to control people. And pork, well, that's one of the healthiest animals that we can be eating. It is us. We just look a bit different. You know what I mean? I don't know if spoken of. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, that's 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 what I heard. That they are the closest to humans without being humans. Yeah. Yeah. So you could argue it's the closest to cannibalism. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, you know, try, 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 try killing them, try killing a pork, you know, to, 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 to feed off it. That animal will fight you, fight you for its life. It yeah, will I can imagine. It will, yeah. kick, it will bite, it will do absolutely everything it can to survive. And they fight hard. They fight mm. hard, you know what I mean? Um, and if you ever do, you know, get to experience something like that, and makes you look at food completely differently. It gives you a whole I, new level. Do you know what? I honestly do believe this, and I can say this to some. I've never killed a pig or anything, but pheasants, and I've plucked pheasants. I think everyone who eats meat should at least either kill one of their animals, as in a food source, pig, yeah. whatever it is, or gut in a, a pheasant. I think everyone should at least experience what it is like to do that, to appreciate what it is that you're eating. I, I do believe that. Yeah, you know, that's, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Um, I think everyone should also, I think everyone should also do probably a year's, year's um, comedy chef work. Um, it humbles you. It, it humbles you. you. You have no choice but to work as a team. Mm. You have no choice but to work as a team. You know, it, it teaches you camaraderie. It teaches you um, community. Uh, within the kitchen, um, it's probably the only environment I've I've ever known not to be racist, prejudiced, or anything like that. That's the only industry. You know, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, there's no racism or prejudice in the kitchen. It's not at all. You're, You're too bloody busy, aren't you? <laughs> You're busy. You ain't got time for it. You know, people oh, yeah. think. You know, um, if you want to have a beef, you take it elsewhere. You know what I mean? Because we've got people. Mm, no pun intended, eh? Yeah, 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 literally. Yeah. But um, the other thing I was going to say, going from religion, which obviously is a form of control, which I think most people yeah. these days can appreciate is fact. Yeah. Um, but now the new religion is is more climate change, and and they're demonising it down that pathway. What do you, what what's your take on all this, all the net zero and? I think they're all insane. Yeah. They're all insane. They've got to be insane. Well, you can't, you can't, they're trying to destroy that, the gas of life. Yeah. Which plants require, you know, and we breathe it out on a day, every second we breathe it out. You know what I mean? And, you know, at what point are the scientists and the experts, so-called scientists and experts, should I say, um, at what point are they going to say when you stop breathing? Well, I'm sure there's going to be a breathing tax at some point if they can. But that's but like you say, everything in nature mimics us. We breathe out carbon monoxide. The trees breathe that in and breathe out oxygen, which is why our lungs look like upside down trees. That's absolutely We're correct. all interlinked. And that's why I also think that this is a spiritual battle. I'm not religious because I understand that the religion is a man-made concept in order to control using fear predominantly. Yeah. But I do believe in the spiritual aspect. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and we, like food has a vibration. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, it does, yeah. You know, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, so that's where I mean with like the alchemy, where I think it all it all ties in. So you've got, you're taking in, if you're taking in good food from mother nature, that raises your vibration because of what you're eating. Yeah. versus all the crap that you can buy for convenience, it just brings you down. You you're you're definitely right. You're absolutely right. I I um when I first got put onto when when they first told me that I wasn't going to be allowed back in the kitchen, um no 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 basis, no grounds, no reasons or anything, you know, not being blacklisted, you know, or anything like that, you know. Um just they they put you on universal credit. And it's like was it 286 something, something, 200 something pounds to live on a month? And um, I, I, I straight away, it, you, you can feel, you know, how, how, how deteriorating your soul feels. Absolutely. Um, 
in charge of food. And I went into a job centre and I was talking to her and she was like, uh, you, you give, we give you enough money. <laughs> and I'm like, are, are you joking? Yeah, you know, two, two, two hundred and something pounds. That's 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 your meat. That's your meat alone. Mm. You know, and you haven't cooked it yet. You haven't no, cooked I see. It. To to the, the average cost to for a ham hock to to boil a ham hock at the moment with their 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 prices, I think it's something like twelve pound. It will cost you. So a ham hock alone costs you five pounds to go and buy. But you ain't gonna go and spend twelve pounds. On energy to cook the thing, they're they're starving. They're starving the people. Yeah. Starving the people. And the, the, not only are they starving the people, but they're also bringing thousands upon th- hundreds of thousands over on boats. So you, you're know, you're, I, you're even I, getting more mouths to feed. I did see a post about all the farmers lining their their tractors up along the beach. So you're hitting home about the farming, no food, no farms, no food, and you're also Stopping the boats from coming in, which seems like quite a quite a two birds with one stone kind of job, but unfortunately they all get picked up by the RNA or whatever it is the the boats, the rescue boats. It's a bit much to ask for the. Um, I think I think it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit much to ask on the farmers, in my opinion. I think the yeah. farmers enough as it is. Think, well, they've got a six time. window opportunity at the moment. Yeah, from the farmers that I've spoke to, and so all the things that they like, the campaigns and the protests, that all needs to be done within these six weeks. Because then after that six weeks is when they were going to be out on the fields working. We've got one days. Stuff, but just trying, trying, trying to you know get my brother to believe um, that we've got we've got roughly one harvest left. Yeah, we've got one. Well, that's harvest. true. And uh, last year's harvest was very bad, and that's yeah. what we're eating this year so come next year yeah because if they have up on tins if they haven't been given their subsidies and everything else and their subsidies have been cut which means they're gonna have to grow less you yeah. know so they're harvest- also other countries other countries are keeping hold of more of their produce and not yep. distributing it because they know what's coming so they're thinking that's why china hasn't imported half as much rice because they know that they're going to need it yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's it, scary it's times like, for sure. We we can grow, we can grow so much in this country. We just need to change our growing habits. We just we just need to change a few things, you know. But it seems they seem very unwilling. Um, and they, there's loads of organisations I've spent I've spent speaking to in the past three years, and. Unless, 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 unless you start talking about profit and money, no one's interested in this food issue. No, that's it. There's, 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 there's no, there's no desire to, to, to actually help anyone go. Um, we, we shouldn't be paying for food. Nobody should pay for food. You've already fucking paid for it. You've already paid for it. See, you, you, whatever work you do today. You've earned your food for tomorrow. Yeah. Period. No, that's true. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, if you're working, you're being you're being forced from from doing what your gift of life is to, to till the land. We have hands, right? They're, they're a gift for a reason. They are a gift for a reason. You know what I mean? You know, you're, you're not... going slow. You're going ever, ever so much that way every time you're banging the table. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, you're right. You're right. No, we're given hands and feet for a reason. We're not. We're, we're not. We weren't given those for any other reason other than to work the land and feed 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 each other. You know, um, you 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 choose your. You, the, well, your shamans, your chefs—they—they they were, they were, they were the chiefs. Yeah, well, that's you know, very true. They were the chiefs. You know, um, I—it it baffles me. It genuinely does, actually. You know what I mean? You know, you're sitting here, we've got the oldest farmers and, and cooks hold the oldest knowledge on the planet. They hold the oldest knowledge on the planet, and. They're not taking. They're not listening to. They're not taking it seriously. You know, because yeah. for some reason, 
scientists think that they, I think they, they think they, 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 they think that I don't even know what it is to be quite honest. What, what I think it? it's the board of scientists, isn't it? It's the scientists that have been paid off. They're the ones that yeah, we hear about. It's, it's like it's, 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 I don't know. It's just. It's, I think it's just a load of mental people that do a load of thinking, you know what I mean? They just come up with some mad fucking ideas, you know what I mean? And, you know, fuck people's lives up. They don't do anything productive. No, and um, unfortunately, we now live in a, a world where there's no accountability. So people can do what they want, knowing that there's going to be no comeback on them. Yeah, yeah. And that needs to change. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think Andrew Brisson's on that one, so... Um... Hopefully he's because um, he's very interesting. He, he, uh, he used to, he used to also Andrew Bridgen. He had a business with his brother. Um, I think that went tits up, but that was food, fruit and veg. Yeah, and uh, Mark Byford. We went up to Wellingborough last weekend, and he spoke with him. And he, Andrew Bridgen, was able to talk to Mark Byford, his farmer, and he's always. His passion is produce, whether yeah. it's getting it to people, growing it, whatever it is, that's his passion. Andrew Bridgen was able to maintain a conversation with him, saying, yeah, absolutely. And he was, so he's, Andrew is very knowledgeable on this, yeah, which is quite reassuring. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah. That's, that's good to know. Um, I, I, I I've heard of Mark Byford. Uh, he's, I've seen him on TV a few times, got TV on, on the internet and everything. So um, I could I could hook you up if you wanted to, if you think that you could bounce off each other idea wise and stuff. Possible. There's a big movement possible. for it at the uh, moment. I, I think I do think that um yeah um, we especially uh, uh, we need to get the chefs, especially well, I actually believe we need to get the chefs on board with the farmers. Um that's 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 really important, you know, because yeah. um well, I've already told a few of my friends who are in, in farming or in trucking, you know what I mean? But um, when when the time comes, if they need a personal chef to keep them alive during the war, uh, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm a mm. Because I ain't fighting for my country. Well, not, I'm not fighting for the government anyway. No. I fight for the no. people. I fight for the, um, I fight for the people. But I ain't fighting for the issue. No. I ain't fighting for them. No. We're not, we're, we're not interested in fighting proxy wars for rich people <laughs> no no well i don't even they, they say um uh, was it um they they we need, need to protect our interest in the middle east i have no interest in the middle east do, do you no no you know, i've got no investments over there or anything you know no I, I live i live i live in britain and and they can't say it's for the the, the oil and stuff because we're still paying extortionate prices i mean the barrels at an all-time low isn't it for like a, a decade but yet we're still paying well above the average price compared to all the other countries in europe we're so... surrounded by oil we're surrounded by oil we mm. are literally surrounded by oil oil has been as far as i can make out has been missold. it's 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 not a fossil fuel it's an abundant um mineral probably the second most abundant mineral on the earth or the second most abundant liquid on earth to water. Yep. And but it's been designed to, oh, it's scarce, it's scarce, but it's not scarce. And and if you can, if the planet can make it, we can make it. Yeah. So I've even heard theories about even like down to fossils themselves, that it doesn't really take thousands and thousands and thousands of years to form a fossil. It's a pressure, isn't it? Mm. You know what I mean? All, all, all that is, is, you know, um, whatever whatever died or whatever got crushed is being pressurised under heat and pressure, you know? So we, we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can do that ourselves. We do it ourselves when we make coal. Yeah. We don't, we don't not, not all of our coal comes out of the ground now. A lot of it's made, you know, in, in pressurised containers. You know, see, yeah. below heat. So if you can do it with coal, you can do it with oil. You know, and we know it's possible. We know it can be done because the Germans did it during the Second World War. 
Yeah. And that's that's not exactly shouting about I know, you know what I mean, you know, but they 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 were well ahead of their time. They were well ahead of their time. You know, in terms of technology and everything. I'm, I'm I think a lot of our his I think a lot of our history has been Oh, covered up. <laughs> yeah. I mean you look at things like is it Tartaria? Yeah, I've, I've heard of that. Yeah. Civilization of Tartaria. And even mm. like the Chinese, the, the Wall of China, they actually reckon that that wasn't China that built that. It was Isn't the Tartarians to keep the to keep the Chinese out. And apparently this Wall of China used to be where shops, people would walk along and it'd be a trading place. So there would be shops there and stalls. And, and it was this... So a lot of our history has been falsified. Well, that that that's interesting to know. I didn't I didn't realize um, didn't realize we have been lied about the wall of China that much. Uh, I mean, yeah. I've heard something about it, you know, because I, I remember I was seeing something, and when they they showed they showed the outline, and when they explained it, it does look back to front. Mm. In a yeah. sense, you know, it does look like the China's on the outside, and whatever. It should be on there should be something on the other side, like a big you know, principality and everything. But it's not yeah. just where Mongolia, Siberia and everything all all heads in you know, towards Russia. Yeah. That's right, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, which which um Genghis Khan, isn't it? He had that area. Mm -hmm. um, that's like really, really delving into <laughs> the yeah. there. <laughs> There's enough to blow your head, that's for sure. There's yeah. enough to blow your head. But listen, I think I've really enjoyed this conversation. I will so have you back on. Um, that's all right. I, I, I so there's, there's loads in, in, in the head that um, in my head, I'd like to get out and get more onto paper and everything. And yeah, and you should con you should think about writing a book. I have thought about it. I have thought about it, but obviously, we've until I get new teeth, until these the NHS pull their finger out of their backside and decide that you know they don't want to kill me. Um, I'm not going to let him kill me anyway. You know what I mean? I'd rather go and do a you know a couple of grams of ketamine and get someone to punch me in the mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? yeah. if, need, if, if fucking if need be, mate. You know what I mean? Fucking if, you know if they don't sort themselves out, I'd rather actually go down that route or something. You know what I mean? Because I'm not dying for them. It's not happening. No, definitely not. Fucking, and I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. You may you may have seen it on one of my videos, but my stepdad used to be a dentist, and he's just recently retired, and a new dentist has come into the the town in which he practiced and he's a private dentist and my stepdad was a private dentist as well but this private dentist has tried three times to get an nhs contract with the government and they won't let him that's that's mad so what, so what does that tell you that tells me they have no interest in that's 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 actually really scary. That is. Mm, I'd love to get him on to talk about it. That's that's really really scary. I'm gonna um I'm gonna I'm gonna speak to uh, Scott at Remplay because that's where I went. I um I went to the job centre and uh, I was like because obviously being on disability benefits and knowing look I don't I'm not mentally unstable and I'm not mentally mm. ill. Which is what they yeah. signed up for. So it goes against my the core of my bones now. You know, like to be on this benefit. It really does it, you know what I mean? It's like, no, no, no I'm, this, this is stealing, this is theft. You know what I mean? This That's what's happening. And they're making, you know, so I'm stealing off the people all because of a, a misdiagnosis from the government and the NHS when all they could do is pull out the dead teeth in my mouth, give me some false teeth and get me back to work. You know, but they, mm. they, they'd rather... That I suffer with this awful freaking label that I'm a benefit scrounge and everything. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I'm not, even though people don't call me it, that tag gets automatically put on you straight away. You know? Well, it's also, it, it, there's that, but it's also just a case of having self preservation and, and self respect. And it's hard when that's taken away from you out of your control. Because it's still, it's still, even though you're not, it still makes you feel that way. The same as if you see a police car behind you, you know you haven't done anything wrong, but all of a sudden you think, "Fuck, what have I done?" Yeah, and it's the same. It's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. So, but no, I'd like I said, I'd love to have you on. I hope you get managed to get your teeth sorted. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me, Chris.
You're um, more than welcome, mate. You're more than welcome. This hopefully will be on later on this evening. So I'll send you the link once it's up. Thank you very much, Chris. It's been a pleasure yeah. to talk to you. And I do apologise if it's been a bit of a tangent rant and everything. Um, um, Look, we all need people, to have a rant. Hopefully hopefully, people will take something from this. Um, get yourselves out there. Go and get um, La Russe Gastronomy, right? That is like the Bible of cooking books, all right? Okay. Right? Um, or, or this book. Yeah, get yourself this book. Now, this doesn't have okay. weights of ingredients in it, all right? It's literally handwritten recipes from chefs hundreds of years ago, all right? Okay, cool. So it's literally, you have to use your imagination with this. Mm. There if is, you if you're able to send me some links to the books, I will put that in the video description, and then people can click on it from here. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Super nice one. Everything, everything that's got me, you know, through my life and everything. Um, hopefully, we can save some save some more people. Um, because I do worry about the amount of food poisoning issues that are because I know for a fact so many people didn't just die of food, flu and things like that and everything. So many people died from food poisoning because I had no idea they had it. Mm, no, that makes perfect sense. That does make perfect sense. You know I mean? Scary but, times, but we will win this and we will prevail in the end. But until next time, nice one and thanks for joining me. Take care, Chris. Cheers, mate. Take care. All the best.